Hi students, my name is Samuel Chupu Ebeka. Welcome to this video segment. In this video segment, we shall discuss simple interest. Uh, my, this video, the link uh, will be on uh, my website www.samuelchupuemeka.com uh, There are so many resources that you can use on that website. Uh, simple interest is a topic that we discuss in financial mathematics, finite mathematics, business mathematics, uh, financial management, some management classes. And uh, this is very important if you're dealing with money, okay, whenever you will talk about money. Uh, take for instance, you go to the bank or a credit union and you deposit some money uh, in the savings account. There are so many types of account that a bank has, but usually the savings account uh, earns some interest right uh, actually the thing is called interest yeah but in this uh, video we just say simple interest uh, because usually you put it on a savings account and also some checking account and interest anyway but let's consider a savings account whereby you deposit some money and while depositing the money it doesn't hurt if you ask the bank hey what is your interest rate and the bank might tell you it's the 0.01 percent or maybe uh, 0.05 percent you know it is a very small interest rate yeah most banks have very low interest rates so at the end of some years now when they say 0.05 percent it means per annum per annum uh, if you hear per annum it means per year means per year yeah or you can say annually annually means yearly okay annual annual means year okay so usually the interest rate is an annual interest rate they calculate it per year then after some years that money you deposited will generate some money no matter how small so that small money it generates is what we call an interest and we just call it a simple interest because it is not compounded when we talk of compounded then we refer to compound interest but in this video we shall just discuss simple interest now take for instance another instance whereby you go to borrow money you borrow money from your bank you borrow money for uh, you have an auto loan, loan for car, loan for school, student loan, right? It does not hurt if you ask them the interest rate because whether you deposit money or whether you borrow money, it is usually, there is, a, there is usually an interest rate, an annual rate of interest. That means per year, they will find the rate of that interest and add it to the money you either deposited or the money you borrowed so it is good to know what uh, the interest rate is so you know how much money to pay back after some years after some years okay I need to pay this money back or after some years this money would have yielded this interest so I need to do what I can to pay it back faster so uh, this uh, it, the use is numerous, you know, it kind of helps you to know the financial analysis, to make good financial decisions yeah, on where to deposit money, where to uh, invest, and also uh, where to borrow if you need to borrow. Okay, now before you view this video, please, it is highly recommended that you view the videos on uh, literal equations. View the videos on literal equations and also the videos on fractions. Fractions, it is important. Uh, you need the arithmetic brush up and algebra 
you need to know fractions for you to do this and you also need to know literal equations in algebra for you to do this then you also rounding up rounding to the nearest 10 rounding to the nearest hundred rounding to the nearest thousand rounding up that knowledge is equally important okay so let's say now suppose you deposit money suppose you deposit money money or you borrow money suppose you deposit money in a bank or you borrow money from a bank. Suppose you deposit money in a bank or you borrow money in a bank. Now that money is called, that money is what we call the principal sum. Principal sum. And we call it P. We call that money P, uppercase P. So you deposit money into your checking, uh, into your savings account, or let's say checking account that pays interest, or you borrow a loan, okay, or you borrow money. That money is a principal sum, which is called, which we designed it as P. Okay. okay. Now, the bank that you borrow it from, or any place you're borrowing it from, okay, or the bank that you deposit your money into, has an interest rate okay that bank has an annual interest rate annual interest rate or we say rate of interest or interest rate per annum we can say interest rate per annum and it's called R okay and then you need to pay this money back after some years. Usually we, usually we put the time to be in years. Now you might need to pay it back after two months, three months, four months, five months. It doesn't matter. But usually, even if you need to pay it back after six months or five months, we usually find the equivalent in year. Like six months is half year, 0 0.5 year. Okay, so. Uh, we usually you need to pay this money back or you need to withdraw this money from the bank okay after some time okay you need to withdraw that money after some time that time is what we call T usually in years now the interest rate per annum is usually as a decimal usually as a decimal we usually because is because percent is divided by 100 5% means 5 over 100. 30% means 30 out of 100. So we usually uh, uh, write it as decimal. Then, after some time T, that time we call it T, usually in years. Usually in years. So if it is in months, you convert it to year. So after some time T, that money you deposited into the bank, will yield a fee for you i mean not a fee that not a fee that you will pay it will yield some extra money for you that little money it yields for you is what we call the interest because look at what happens the bank will take that money and borrow it to somebody else and of course if they borrow it to somebody else then that person will have to pay the bank back with interest with a fee it's just like charging you a fee for using someone else's money okay just like if you use someone else's stuff you pay so you're not using your own money somebody else is using you're using that person is using your money that you deposited so the bank will charge that person right and the person will have to pay a fee for using that money so out of that fee the bank will give you a little in accordance with the interest rate per annum they'll give you a little amount. That amount is called an interest and on that money you deposited. Interest and on the principal sum that you deposited. Or if you borrow money, right, that means you're using someone else's money. So you have to pay for using someone else's money. So that money you pay on someone else's money, you pay back to the lender or the, you know, the person that borrowed you the money or the bank so that 
fee that you pay back is what we call interest. So it could be seen either the money you deposit or the money you borrow. Okay, so the, the fee, the, the fee charged, okay, for the money borrowed, for the money borrowed, or the or the money that is earned, or the money that is earned. On, on a sum of money deposited, on a sum of money deposited, is what we call the interest, simple interest, interest, and we refer to it as I. Now we mean simple interest. We mean simple interest. So the principal sum of money is the money in dollars, right? Money. In dollars. Well, in Nigeria, we use Naira. Naira, etc. Okay? That's money in dollars. In Naira, in dollars, in yen, in uh, all these other currencies, right? Now, uh, in Dina and so, and, and so on. The interest rate, of course, usually as a decimal, interest rate. An interest, another thing with interest rate is that it is in percent, okay? Annual interest rate, in percent. Annual interest rate, you can write in percent, okay? Or annual rate of interest, in percentage. Usually as a decimal, of course we convert it as a decimal. But the interest rate is in percent, in percentage or in percent. Then time is in years, okay? And then the fee that is charged for the money you borrowed, or the extra money that you gain from the money you deposited is what we call the simple interest or the interest I. So now, how do we calculate this interest now? How do we calculate this interest? We now see that I is equal to principal times rate times time. Principal times rate times time. Okay? Remember, the principal, the P is principal in money, in dollars, in Naira. Arrow is the rate, annual rate of interest in percentage, and T is the time in years. Okay, so that's basically this. Uh, th I will, this will be two videos, actually, because there are more questions I wanted to solve there uh, because of the bulge. I had to break it up. So, so that you can kind of understand very well how this works, you know, it's important. All right, let's start, let's start on with questions right away. Number one, find the principal if I, if the interest is $99 and the uh, arrow is 6%, that's it, that's, that's good interest rate. And then the time is nine months. So let's find the principal sum that will, this means find the principal sum that will generate this interest rate, that will generate this interest, find the principal sum that will generate an interest of $99 if that money is deposited in a bank that has an annual interest rate of 6% over nine months, and the money is collected over nine months. Okay, or for nine months. Okay, find, find the principal sum of money that will generate an interest of $99 in a bank that has an annual interest rate of 6% for nine months. Okay, or find a principal sum that will generate an interest of $99 for nine months in a bank that has an annual rate of 6% interest. Or an annual interest rate of six percent. So that is what it is. Now we have the uh, now. So you're asked to find the principal, and I is P R T. So from literal equations, you want to find P. So left hand side, you know, whatever you want to find, you move it to the left hand side. And this is an equation, so you can always switch. You rearrange. Make your left hand to be your right hand, 
and your right hand to be your left hand. So B R T will be I. So B will be I divided by R T. When you divide both sides by R T, that's why I say that uh, this is important. Literal equations is important. Because some folks will ask me, how did I get that? Okay, this will cross out. So B will be I divided by R T. Yeah. So please view that video on literal equations. It's very important because I won't have the time to explain that to do all these steps, you know. If you look at it, you know that you divide both sides by R T. So this is our this is the formula for our principle. So let's go ahead and find it. We know now that B is equal to I over R T. So what is our I? The interest is $99. We're doing question one. And R is 6%. Of course, which is 6 over 100, which is 0 0.06. Okay? And our T is nine months. Now, nine months, and we say that usually with simple interest is, you know, money that is deposited that will be collected for about less than a year, about a year, okay? Uh, now, if it's a month, just put it, convert it to years. So, nine months, if you convert it to year, 12 months make one year. So, nine months will be what? If you do proportion. By proportion, you have that this is nine out of 12, okay? And nine out of 12 will give you what? Three out of four, right? Which is a 0 0.75. So, your principle, now, now, you might be lucky with this. Okay, I want to say something here. You might be lucky with this because this is not a repeating decimal. Now, if this was a repeating decimal, right, that means it's good to use solve as fraction. We probably will solve a question like that. Yeah, because if, you, if it's a repeating decimal and you approximate it, no, it will mess up your answer. Please, whenever you're solving questions in statistics or in business, don't approximate until the end. Do not approximate until the end. You might be cheating someone of his uh, money. Okay? <laughs> so B would be 99 over 0 0.06 times 0 0.75. Times 0 0.75. So when you do that, what will it be? Uh, usually when you're using calculator, you kind of want to do this using PEMDAS. You know what, another good thing to do is spend us. That's another video you will need to view. Order of operations, please. View that, okay? Some folks, the mistake they make is they come immediately, they do 99 divided by 0 0.06 times 0 0.75. If you do that right away like that, you will get it wrong. Okay, most times you get it wrong. I'm telling you now. So just do it one at a time. The numerator is 99. The next thing you do is you now do 0 0.06 times 0 0.75. And that gives you 0 0.045. Then you now divide. You know, you do it PEMDAS. PEMDAS. Uh, B PEMDAS. B PEMDAS. Order of operations. Please view the video on that. So this is 99 divided by. 0.045 and that will give you $2,200 if you don't put your unit it is wrong now if you just write 2200 it could be 2200 shoes it could be 2200 shirts it could be 2200 calculators it could be 2200 chalk <laughs> So it's going to be 2,200 pieces of chalk. So you must put your unit. You must do that. Dollars. Yes. Okay, we are done with one. And if we are done, then we can uh, have some space. Now let's go ahead and do two. Find the rate of interest if I is $72. B, the principal sum is $2,400 and the time is 270 days. Assume a 360 day year. 
Okay, so we have that now i is equal to b r o t and they're asking for the rate of interest r. So b r o t is equal to i, so our r is i over p t. So what is our i here? Our i will be $72. Okay, then our p principal sum is $2,400. And then our time is 270 days. So uh, now the 270 days, and if it's 360 day year, that means a year is 360 days. So 270 days will be what you know, uh, proportional reasoning. So when you use proportional reasoning, it will be 270 over 360. Okay, because one year is 360. Therefore, 270 days will be how much? How many years? You understand what I mean? Proportional reasoning. So, one year is 360 days. So, 270 days will be how many? X. Or you can say 360 days is one year. So, 270 days will be how many? Y or X, whichever one. So, you now do cross product get your x, 270 over 360. And this will be what? Uh, 3 into 27 is 9 over 12. And uh, that will still give what? 3 over 4, which is 0 0.75. Okay? So we are lucky. It is not a repeating decimal. Now, if it is a repeating decimal, we we'll change the way we do it. Okay? So now, our rate of interest will now be 72 all over... Uh, 2400 times 0 0.75 and that will be 72 over we now do 2400 I can do this but let me save some time over 1800 and we now do 72 divided by 1800 and that gives us 0 0.04 I read 0 0.04 okay that's the rate now that we say the rate is usually a percent, expressed as percent, right? So if it's 0 0.04, that means if we ch change this decimal to percent, right? Now the rate is the percentage, but usually we write it as decimal, yeah? But let's convert it back to percentage. If you want to convert decimal to percent, you multiply by 100. So when you multiply that by 100, 0 0.04 by 100, it gives you 4%, 4% interest rate. Okay, 4% interest rate. All right, now we are done with one and two, so let's have some space here. Let's have some space here and then do three. Find the time if uh, I is $105, B is uh, the principal sum is seven thousand, and the rate is six percent. Okay, now you see one thing about the rate is when you're solving it in the question, change it to decimal. It's in percent. They give it to you in percent. If you're solving it to find something, change it to decimal. Now, but if you're being asked to find it, you know when you when they give you the rate, then change it to they give it to us, then change it to decimal and solve to find whatever you're looking for. But when you're asked to find the rate, then convert it back to percent. When you find the decimal, convert it back to percent. Okay, uh, here uh, we now see that our I is PRT, and we see that PRT is I. So that gives us that T is I over PR. Our time is I over PR. Okay, so our I is 105, 105 dollars over, uh, our P is 7,000 times, now the rate, the rate is 6%, right? The rate is 6%, R is 6%, which is 6 over 100, which is 0 0.06, because they gave it to us. So let's uh, convert to decimal. So that is 0 
So that, that means that our T will be what now? 105 all over what? Now if we do, if we go ahead and do 7,000, 7,000 times 0 0.06, 0 0.06, that gives us 420. Okay, so that means our T will now be what? 105 divided by 420. And that gives us 0 0.25. Yay. Remember our T is in years. Remember. Okay, we are done with three, so I can erase it. And let me just leave this and then go, go ahead and erase this one and then come back to this. Okay, number four. Assume a principal P is borrowed and the loan's future value A at time T is given. Find the loan's simple interest rate R to the nearest tenth of a percent. Okay, here they gave us P to be 3,000, then A, the amount, to be $33,120 and the time to be six months. Okay, now, We've talked about simple interest, right? Okay. Now, when you get that interest, that fee that is charged when you borrow money and they charge you that fee, or when you deposit money and you earn that extra money, right? You earn that extra money. Let's say, let's take the first instance when you borrow money and they charge you that fee. When you pay back, you don't only pay back the interest, you don't only pay back the fee. You've got to pay back the sum, that amount of money, that sum, that the principal sum that was loaned to you, you will pay it back plus the interest. So you're paying back the, that principal sum, the money you borrowed, you pay it back. Okay? And then the interest that is accrued on that money, the interest accrued on that money, you will still pay it back. So. The, that principle that you borrowed, okay, plus the P, the principle that you borrowed plus the interest that you pay back is the amount, the total amount that you have to pay back. Or if you deposit money in a savings account, that extra money you earn, the interest you earn on that money you deposited, including that money you deposited, is the amount that you now have. It's the amount that you now have. So that amount is the money you borrowed and the interest, the fee on that money. The interest that was accrued on that money. Or if you deposited, that money you deposited initially plus the extra money that you earned on that money, that becomes the amount A. So A is the amount in dollars in dollars, naira, etc. And so on. Now another thing is that when you're dealing with the amount of principal, you know like dollars, we, we have only, dollars have two decimal places for cents. You know, you can have 100 cents make a dollar. So, if, if you're working on dollar, then it should be two decimal places to signify the cents. If you're working on naira, Naira, it should be two decimal places to signify Kobo. Okay, I still know Naira and Kobo. Okay, now that is the thing now. So let's go ahead and solve this. Now A will now be B plus. Now recall, recall that the interest is what? Principal times rate times time. So the amount now will be B plus principal times rate times time. And then what is common here? B is common, right? So B divided by B is 1 plus B RUT divided by B is RUT. So this is the formula for the amount that we will use. The amount. Now, please, this formula is very important because as we go on to solve compound interest later on in other videos, 
they will say that we need this. Okay, so uh, this is now the amount that will be that you will receive or that you will pay back. Okay, all right. The amount that you will receive when you deposit the principal in a bank that charges an annual rate of interest over some years. The amount you receive over some years if you deposit a principal sum of money in a bank that charges an annual rate of interest. Okay? Or the amount that you will pay back over some years to a financial lender or financial institution that loaned you some money principal sum of money P at an annual interest rate R. Okay? So let's know that. Alright, so let's go ahead. This is the formula we'll use. Let's go ahead and solve this now. So this will be um, A is P 1 plus R T. And then uh, R P now we want to find what the interest rate R. So let's go ahead and solve for R. Look, look at my video on literal equations, it's important. So this means that B, 1 plus RT, will give us A. So we divide both sides by P, we have that 1 plus RT will be A divided by P. Now, we, we now subtract 1 from both sides, RT will be A over P minus 1, and then we divide both sides by A. Uh, we divide both sides by t, by t, so R will be A over P minus 1 divided by T. You can take some time and look at it, okay? But, but it's important that you view my video on literal equations. So let's now use this and solve this. We will soon be done with this. So now our A is a... Uh, so our R will be A is uh, 3120 divided by B is uh, 3000 then minus 1 all over T is 6 months. Now T is 6 months, right? 6 months and that will give you what? That T is 6 over 12 because 12 months make 1 year which is 1 over 2. Right? 1 over 2, which is 0 0.5. You might use 0 0.5 or you can use 1 over 2. 0 0.5 is not a repeating decimal, so you can use it if you don't like fractions. You can just use 0 0.5. Okay, so I will now be uh, 3120 over 3000 minus 3000 over 3000 divided by half. Now, we, some, some other person might come and do here, I don't like fraction. They might say, just go ahead and do 3120 divided by 3000. Some people might just do that, okay? But I choose to do, uh, I choose to do, I choose to do this fraction. That's what I choose to do, okay? But some people might do 3120 divided by 3000. And it gives you 1.04. So it is not a repeating decimal. You can, you know, we can do that here. But look, if it's a repeating decimal, then you don't do that. You do it the fraction way. But you know what? Let's do it fraction and let's do it uh, decimal. It doesn't matter. So I think I've done what I need here. So let me erase it. So I don't want to be 3120 minus 3000 will give us what? 120 over 3000. Now divided by 1 over 2, right? So R will be 120 over 3000 times 2 over 1. So 12, 0, 0, 0 will cancel 0. 2 will cancel to 150, right? 3 will cancel 12 is 4, 3, 50. Then 2, 4, 2 will cancel 4, 2, 2, 25. So R will be 2 over 25, right? Which is actually a... Uh, 25 into 2 is 0 0.20. It won't work. 0 put under 0. 200 is 8. So R will be 0 0.08. 0 0.08, which is what? 
you multiply by 100, 8%. Because you've multiplied at 8%. Now, it says, uh, it says to the nearest tenth of a percent. The question says to the nearest tenth of a percent. So, to the nearest tenth of a percent, to the nearest tenth of a percent, nearest tenth of a percent, then our arrow will now be 8.0%. Yeah. Because it's just like to the what to one decimal place. To the nearest tenth of a percent, you now put 8.0%. This is the same thing as saying to one decimal place. Okay, because tenth of a percent is ten. Tenth, tenth, you know, to the nearest tenth of a percent. So it's the same as to one decimal place, which is 8.0. Okay, now if you choose to do it, uh, if you choose to do this uh, decimal, this will be 1.04 minus 1 all over 0 0.5. So that will be 0 0.04 over 0 0.5 and that will actually be 4 over 50 which is 2 over 25 which is 0 0.08 which is 8 percent then to the nearest 10 of a percent will be 8.0 percent okay so that will be it uh, let's finish up this number five Number five, uh, find the time with this. Okay, time. Now A is equal to B, 1 plus ROT, right? So B, 1 plus ROT is A. So 1 plus ROT will give us A over P. Then ROT will be A divided by P minus 1. So our time will be A divided by P minus 1 all over R. That's our time. So T will be... Okay, our arrow is 18%, which is what? Our arrow is 18%, 18%, which is uh, 0 0.18. So we got other things ready. So this is 1032 all over 600 minus 1 all over 0 0.18. Now, if we do this, with the calculator so we can save time. If we do 1032 divided by 600, 1.72. So it's, it gives us, it, I mean it gives us, it doesn't give us a repeating decimal, so we can use that. So 1.72 minus 1, 0 0.72 divided by 0 0.18. Okay. Let me just write this here. So we have at the time is 0 0.72 divided by 0 0.18, right? And that is 72 divided by 18, right? Which is four years. Four years. Yeah, four years. But if you want, you can do it as fraction as well, if you want to. You can do it as fraction. Okay, let's finish up. Number six. Number six. And a retail store charges 23% annual rate for overdue accounts. How much interest will be owed on a $911 account that is two months overdue. Okay, so the retail store charges 23% annual rate, so that means our R is 23%, which is 23 over 100, which is 0 0.23. Then, how much interest will be owed? Okay, they're asking for interest. How much interest will be owed on a $911 account? So the principal sum is $911 account. That is two months overdue. The time is two months. 
and 2 months, which is 2 over 12 here, which is 1 over 6 here. Okay, you see, in this case, if you do 1 divided by, this is a good example of what I was talking about initially. 1 divided by 6 will give you a recurring decimal, a repeating decimal. So, you can't use decimal. No. Because if you do 1 divided by 6, now it's going to give you 0.16666667. You, you just don't use, you don't just approximate it. And you can't keep on doing 0.16666666667. You know, you can't do that. So, you just have to solve this by fraction. And when you solve it as fraction, that's why I said you need to review the video on fraction. Then after that, in the end, that is when you can now approximate. You don't approximate while to use this, while you are still using something to get an answer. You don't approximate that thing. No, you don't do that. So you have to just solve it as a fraction. So what will it be now? Uh, we, we have our, they're asking us for the uh, interest, interest. So this is a, this will be I equal to P R routine. So this is now that I is equal to 911 times R is 0 0.23 times 1 over 6. Okay, so the simplest way you can do this is just, you know, this means 911 times 0 0.23 times 1 all divided by 6 because this is like 911 over 1. This means this is like 911 over 1 and this is like 0 0.23 over 1. Is the same thing. So this is like 1 times 1 times 6 fractions. Okay? But I don't want to do it that way. If you like, you do it that way, that's fine. It doesn't hurt. Okay? So first of all, we'll do this. I will now be 911 times 0 0.23, and that is 209.53. Then divided by 6. Okay? You see that? So uh, it's now that I will now approximate divided by six. So this will now be I put my dollar sign. Make sure you put the dollar. Make sure you always put the unit. If you put four here without saying four years, it's wrong because four can mean four tables. Okay. So dollar sign the interest thirty four dollars and now because the money is in cents too two decimal places. $34.92 yeah, and that becomes your answer for that. Okay, I think I can erase this now. Um, we are almost done. We are almost done. Number seven. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And you know what? Eh? I can just go ahead and erase this. Number seven, it says, how much interest will you pay for a credit card balance? <laughs> oh, how many of you have credit cards? <laughs> okay. How much interest will you pay for a credit card balance of $892 that is four months overdue? How much interest are you going to pay? Okay. The principal sum, credit card balance of $892, principal sum is $892. Four months overdue. Time is four months, which is four over twelve year, which is one over three. You see, in this case now, one over three year. So one over three is zero point. I think zero point three 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 three. You can't use it. You cannot use 0 0.33, you cannot use 0 0.333, you cannot use 0 0.33333, no, just use 1 over 3. Okay, so what will it be now? Um, uh, how much interest, right? Will you pay for a credit card balance of this that is 4 months over the year? 
Okay, so now we, I think something is probably missing here. Something is probably missing here, which is the interest rate is missing here. Okay, in this question, the interest rate is missing. So why don't we say assume? Okay, assume that the interest rate is uh, 5%. Let's say assume, for question 7, assume the interest rate is 5%. Assume the interest rate. You know what, uh, let me find this question. Uh, I don't even know where I copied it from now. Okay, if an 18% annual, annual rate is charged. Okay, so this is if an 18% you see, that's just missing. Okay, if, please complete this, okay? Overview. If an 18% annual rate is charged. Yeah, I'm sorry, mistake when I was writing it before I said, let me solve it. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, so what would this now be? Uh, arrow is what now? 18%, right? Which is 18 over 100, which is 0 0.18. 0 0.18. So that's enough for the interest I. I is what? T R O T. So I is uh, 892 times R is 0 0.18 times 1 over 3 times. So I is what? We can say 892 times 0 0.18 all over 3. So I will be what now? 892 times 0 0.18. 160.56 divided by 3, which is what? $53.52. Make sure you put the unit dollar, otherwise it's wrong. Okay, we have one more and we can call it a night. One more and we can call it a night. Number eight. A check for $4,278 was used to pay up a 10-month $4,000 loan. What annual rate of interest was charged? Okay, uh, you use this check, right? And that reminds me now of what we call the amount and the principal. Now, you're using this check here, present. I mean, I mean, you're using this check to pay for what you owe, right? So, in this case, who do we refer to as present and who do we refer to as future? Okay, now I know that this English is reporting in past tense, yeah. But when you calculate an amount that you owe, it is the future value. When you're getting, when you're borrowing the money at that time, it is the present value. Now, this question has led me to a clue. Now, you now see that the principal sum, principal, is often called is often called the present value present value and this is very important because when we do compound interest you will see what i mean principal sum is called the present value and then the amount is referred to as let me just say it's not often called is referred to okay we we refer to as the present value, an amount is referred to as the future value. Referred to as the future value. So now you're using, you will use, or let me say you will use, you will use this money to pay up what you borrowed. You will use this check of 4270 to pay up what you borrowed, $4,000 that you borrowed, loan, okay? And they ask you what was the rate of interest that was charged to yield this money. 
for 10 months for 10 months over a period of 10 months okay so our a is equal to b 1 plus r t right in this case our amount is four thousand two hundred and seven dollars and our present value is four thousand dollars okay now um the time is 10 months 10 months which is 10 over 12 year which is a uh, 20 to 10 5 over 6 year okay we'll use 5 over 6 as it as is and then we are looking for what r r is what we are looking for okay uh i will just have to erase this what annual rate of interest? So, uh, okay. So uh, uh, now, how did we, how did we go about doing this again? Probably stay here, so you can see that. Uh, A is equal to P one plus R T. So P one plus R T is equal to A one plus R T is equal to A divided by P. R T is A divided by P minus 1. R is A divided by P minus 1 over T. So R is equal to 4,270 over 4,000 minus 1 all over 5 over 6. Now, I probably would not want to use decimal here. 5 over 6 is, uh, is a repeating decimal. And then uh, 4270 divided by 4000. Okay, it's not bad. I will use I will use the fraction as it is. I will use the fraction as it is. Okay, uh, let's let's finish this stuff, please. Ah. Uh, so our R will be 4270 over 4000 minus 4000 over 4000. All over 5 over 6. So R is equal to 4270 minus 4000 over 4000 divided by 5 over 6. So it will be easier for me to solve. This will be 270 over 4000 times 6 over 5, right? Times 6 over 5, right? Okay, 0 plus out 0. Uh, 2 can go into 6, 3, 2 going into this 200, right? So I have 1,000 here, which makes sense, uh, which will be easier for me now. 3 times 7 is uh, 21, 1 carry 2, 3 times 2, 6. 3 times 2, 6 plus, 3 times 7, 21, 1 carry 2, 3 times 2, 6 plus 2, 8, all over 200. All over 1,000, I mean. All over 1,000. 1,000. 200 times 5 is 1,000, right? So you move three zero. You move backwards three times. So this will be 81, then 1, 2, 3. 0 .0, 0 0.081. And then when you multiply it by 100, you move two times. 1, 2. So R will be 8.1%. You multiply this by 100. 8.1%. Okay, uh, please, thank you so much for listening to this video presentation. Uh, I will have the link to this video on my website, www.samuelchukuemeka.com. Thank you so much for listening. Watch out for part two, where we will solve more challenging problems on simple interest, and then we'll now do compound interest, and then we can do annuities uh, and loans. Thank you so much for listening, students, and you have a good evening.